Good morning, Grandin Lee Luthier here at Sam Ash Music, store number 57 in Indianapolis. Um, one of the common repair jobs that I get other than bridge resets on acoustic is um, any guitarists that have a tilt back headstock that suffer a headstock crack um, right where the, the headstock it meets the neck is typically where they happen and this is 99.99999 or 100% of the time the result of the instrument falling either while playing or it's in a stand and gets knocked over um, somebody leans it up against their amp at a show and somebody else bumps into it and it falls over um, so I'm a big component of a really good stand where they set in sideways it's harder to do put them back against the wall and if you're not playing the guitar keep it in the case um, if it's on a stand on display sure you want to show it off for your friends but eventually you end up paying someone like me to glue the headstock back on. Now this repair is a little bit uh, different in that the it has cracked through the headstock but it is not all, it's a crack it is not separated it's still attached so there's still good wood holding it on. Um, now typically with these kind of repairs again 99 percent of the time I just do the repair. The customer wants the guitar made structurally sound and really isn't concerned about the finish. Um, doing finish repair really adds a lot of expense, whereas just gluing it back together, especially when it's just cracked like this, is relatively easy and therefore inexpensive. My flat rate for doing a headstock like this where it's attached is 75 bucks. All said and done, you know, it doesn't take real long. And when done properly and you get a lot of glue down in there, make a solid glue joint, it's stronger than the original wood itself. Um, so one of the things I do whenever I do this type of repair is I get everything ready first. I don't want to have glue on wood and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I forgot my clamps. So I have got, um, I've got a bucket here with a clean cloth cotton rag with some water in it to wipe away glue squeeze out. I've got a multitude of paper towels already cut off so that after I do the wipe down with a wet rag, I can get the water off the finish right away. Um, because if I can get rid of all the glue squeeze out while it's under clamps and I'm doing it, all I have to do at the end when I'm done 24 hours later is take the clamps off, string it up, and we're good to go. I don't have to clean off any glue and potentially damage the finish. Um, I've got two blocks, one for both sides. This one I've put a thin piece of rubber on to protect the finish. So one's going to go under the headstock on the front right next behind the knot and the other one's going to go on the back of the neck right where the crack is. I've got my two clamps all ready to go, nice big heavy C clamps. Um, I've got my syringe to inject glue and I've got the Type Bond 2, uh, Type Bond or Type Bond 3. Uh, type Bond 3 is um, and Type Bond 2 are better as they have a longer working time. They're a little thinner so they have um, more time for you to assemble and do the work. Um, which is really nice when you're, you know, this kind of thing where it might take you a little bit just to get everything glued together. Um, and having that extra work time, I find very valuable. Um, every now and then, one out of a hundred, I have had a situation where, oops, I have to remove, every, you know, move everything and clamp it back down and the Type Bond 2, Type Bond 3 give you a longer hold, a uh, longer working time. What I also like to do with these type of cracks is I have to get them to open up so I can inject the glue in. Now, granted, I'm running a 20-gauge um, a syringe, which is pretty small, um, and that's the other reason I like the Type Bond 3, is it's thinner where I can force it through the syringe. I don't have to water the glue down. But what I want to be able to do is control opening that crack up, and I don't want to, I want to completely avoid breaking it all the way. So what I've done, um, you can see I've, I've secured, with a pad underneath, I've secured the back of the guitar down to the bench so it's not moving. So what I'm going to do is with another clamp at this end on the end of the headstock, I'm going to apply just enough pressure there to get that crack to open up enough where I can get the glue in but not finish breaking it. And that's best done in a slow controlled environment. So I'm going to, and I've gotten pretty good at doing this, I've done enough of them, I'm just going to put a, a quick clamp at the other end and put it on the tip of the headstock and slowly force that crack open. I'll get to that here in just a minute. Alrighty, so I've got camera down here where you can see the headstock and I've got my clamp against the headstock the end of the guitar got my syringe ready to go I'm going to start slowly applying clamping pressure to the top and now you can see the crack starting to open up and there's a secondary crack here I'm gonna move the camera so hopefully you can see those a little better but you can see 
here where the cracks are really starting to show, okay? So I'm just gonna start injecting, see if I can't move the camera angle. So now you can see where I'm getting the, the oil. Oh, sorry about this. Uh, I got light coming in from the front door that's making this less than desirable. But I think you can get a good look at where the, how the cracks are here. Yeah, there we go, that looks real good, okay? So I'm gonna change the angle of this one leg. Give us a little more lean in on that side. Oops, wrong one. Just a little bit of a lean. There we go. So now as I put the inject the glue in, you'll be able to see what's going on. But here you can see, just adding a little clamping pressure. Again, I don't want to break the neck any worse than it is, but I want to be able to get glue into that crack. Now the idea is to go I mean, this is an inch long needle inch, and I'm able to get all the way down in. And I just start injecting glue until I see it start to come out. Again, we're, we are gonna be dealing with a lot of squeeze out, that's expected. Because I wanna completely fill the crack with usable glue. Now I'm gonna turn the needle sideways so that I can, because when I put it in flat, the open end of the needle is up against the wood and sometimes it'll block you from getting glued onto the crack. And you wanna be very careful inserting it that you don't bend the needle as well, okay? And you gotta be patient with this. This might take a little while. There comes some glue. I see it popping out of the crack. There we go, there's even more. And again, this is why I like the, the thinner versions, the longer lasting versions of tight bond give me time to get glue all the way in there before it starts to, to thicken up and start to set. Okay, now I'm gonna come around to this side. I'm starting to see glue coming out. And again, I've got both, but you're starting to see glue come out through the crack. I got both cracks to deal with. And I need to get this to open up a little more, not much. And if I go in from the side, go cross grain. So, there we go, got glue coming out. Right, now I'm going to go into this secondary crack. See glue coming out. <clears throat> Sometimes you got to put quite a bit of pressure on the syringe. Almost bent it. All right, you can see glue coming out down here. I'm gonna put one more here at the tip and then we're gonna start clamping it up. Okay. Big open cavity in there. Probably right behind the truss rod. Okay. I'm gonna set that in my water. Now I'm gonna release the clamping pressure. Oh boy, look at all that glue. So the first time wiped on, I'm just gonna go with paper towels just to get that bunch of glue off there. Okay, that's a mess. Now I'm gonna put a little hand pressure on there, get a little more of the glue to squeeze out, okay? A little more. Now I'm gonna start putting clamping pressure on it. I'm also just gonna take a quick look at the truss rod access to see if I've got a bunch of excess glue. Nope, truss rod is at the heel on this guitar. I remembered that now. So I'm gonna put this block underneath, this block on top. I'm gonna to put one clamp on. And I'm just letting the edges of the crack be exposed so I can get glue squeeze out as it starts to come out and wipe it down, okay? So I'm gonna put two clamps. 
for even pressure. I'm just gonna start snugging this down. Not hard, but just to start. Again, I'm gonna go through a couple stages and multiple repeats of the glue squeeze out cleanup. It's just easier to deal with in smaller batches. Now the other thing with cleaning up glue squeeze out is you don't wanna completely remove all of it. So the last time you squeeze and get glue squeeze out, you're gonna to wanna to leave some because as it dries, it's gonna suck back into the crack and you don't wanna have a glue starved joint, okay? You don't wanna have a gap where there is no glue and the wood's not being held. A good tight glue line is important because you don't wanna fill the gaps at all. You want it to be wood to wood, okay? So now I've got my clean rag. I'm gonna get a couple more paper towels just to have them ready to go. And now I'm gonna start applying clamping pressure. And we're gonna start seeing glue squeeze out. Here it comes. One more time with the dry paper towel. I'm trying to save my wet rag for the very end. Okay. All right, I'm gonna change the angle of the camera just a little here to get you up a little higher so you can see the glue squeeze out as it's coming out. Okay, good. Apply a little more clamping pressure. Now the trick with clamping pressure too is you'll develop a feel over time is to not, you don't wanna crush the wood. Um, and it's really important, especially on an, an instrument like this or any other wood you're working on that's already finished, um, use clamp box of wood, soft wood underneath. And again, on this one, I've put a little bit of rubber on there to, you don't wanna put, you know, crush the wood and make an impression on the finish. When you're done doing the repair, it should be, except for doing the finish, it should be almost invisible. So there, there's a lot of good glue squeeze out. I'm gonna tighten these one more time, one more wipe, and then the paper towels, and where this one is, and I'd just be ready to sit for 24 hours. All right, there you have it. Let it sit for 24 hours. And take the clamps off. Now, very often too, I like to wait. I like to let them sit under clamping pressure for 24 hours and then let them rest with the clamps off for 24 hours. Um, I don't want the glue to just dry. I want it to set and be fully hardened and fully strong. So there you go. See you next time. All right, it's been sitting now with the clamps on I'm gonna, for 24 hours minimum. I'm gonna pop the clamps off and let's have a look. I remember yesterday about the uh, cleaning of the glue as we got the squeeze out, but not doing too much because sometimes it'll, it'll, well not sometimes, but the glue will suck back in a little bit as it dries. So you don't want a glue starved joint. <clears throat> But if we've clamped it all up properly, all right. Rather than moving the camera, I'm just gonna move the guitar up. Nice, clear, almost like it didn't happen, not quite. This is about as tight a glue joint as you can get. There is absolutely no lip there. Now, the only thing that, you know, and in several spots, like right here, it's, it's actually completely invisible. You can't see the repair at all. And that's really what we're going for. However, like most customers with a guitar of this price range, and this guitar is just about two and a half years old, um, really nice Yamaha, some really, really, really well-built instruments. I have several Yamaha basses. Um, this is an A5R but they really don't want to spend the extra money to have the finish repaired. Um, so we're not going to do any of that. And there are just a couple little spots, very small spots here where some of the original finish did chip off. Um, and there is one little spot where there's a little glue squeeze out. I'm just going to clean that up, believe it or not, with my fingernail, it'll, it'll pop right off for the most part because the glue won't stick to the finish there. Um, other than that, all I have to do now is string it up, put the tuners back, two tuners back on, string it up, give the customer a call, it's ready to go. All righty, see you next time.